now that we have the blocks color coded, we're going to add in some different ideas. And now the first big idea is basically there's three types of elements. Metals, non-metals, and metalloids. Now, metals have certain characteristics. Non-metals have certain characteristics. Metalloids are the ones that are in between. They have a little bit of this, a little bit of that. They're the hybrids, which means that they have some metal stuff to them and they have some non-metal stuff to them. Now, our job is to figure out where the heck these metalloids are. And it's a lot easier to figure out, all right, if we can color code in where the metalloids are, then we understand uh, where the non-metals are and where the metals are. And I'm going to use a colored pencil and I'm going to shade them in. It just happens to be that all the metalloids are in the P block. So so yeah, I'm going to have to shade them in, but they're all in the P block. And they kind of form a staircase. So let me zoom into the P block. And this is for the metalloids. Now the first metalloid is going to be in 3A. It's the first element in 3A, the top element in 3A. You can shade, or I'll show you a different way that you can do this. If you don't want to shade it in so you don't lose that box. The, the next, it, it kind of forms like a staircase. The next one you can do is if you want to highlight and just kind of bolden those, it's the next in, in, uh, in group 4A. It's the next two, or it's like two and three. So if you want to kind of just highlight those, and if you wanted to just highlight this guy instead of shade them in, that might make it a lot easier for you. But these are the metalloids. And these are kind of like the wall between the metals and the metal and the non-metals. And they share characteristics. And the next group, they kind of go by twos. The next group in 5A is the next step down. It's going to be one down, but it's going to be two of them. Then in 6A, it's the last two in the P block. And then there's one more. In 7, it's the last one in 7. It's the last one in the P block in 7 before you get to the unknown regions. These are all your metalloids. So if you want to shade them in, go ahead and shade them in. I, hi I did the highlighting just because if you wanted to, like for example, for 4A, that's silicone. So this is 14 silicone. If you want to put that in there, or silicon, sorry, silicon, and the one below it is germanium at number 32. So number 32, germanium. I don't, I, I, I can't, I, I can't write that small. So if you wanted to do that, that's why I had you to create the bigger one because then you can put them in there. Um, and I'll just give you the next one, arsenic. 
that's 33, and then that would be 51, that's 52, um, and that's 84, and that one's 85. So, and this guy is 5. So, 5, 14, 32, 33, 51, 52, 84, 85. So, uh, those are all your metalloids. So, they have some characteristics of metals and some characteristics of gases. Now, or not gases, but non-metals. So, these guys over here, all of these guys are your non-metals over here. Everything else is a metal. So these are all non-metals. Now, one thing that I want to show, that I want you to to put in here, is for eight A. Put a G in all the P block and in helium because they're gases. As a matter of fact, 8A let me zoom that out a little bit. 8A these guys are your noble gases. So 8A is your noble gases. 7A are called your halogens. So they have special names. So 7A ha are halogens and 8A are noble gases. Now, I wanted to show you that, all right, those are gases. And this first row in the P block, every one except for the first two are gases. So you could put gas, gas, gas. So a lot of gas. So it goes gas, 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 gas. All of those are gases, and the one right before it is gas. So all of those are your gases. So if if I said, all right, if, if there was a question, I said, take out your periodic table and name me all the gases at room temperature and all that. You're gonna you're gonna go and you're gonna tell me all of those guys, all of those guys, that guy, and there's one more. The last four and the first P row, the last two in the second P row, then the last ones in all the noble gases, obviously, since they're called noble gases. Helium and hydrogen. I put So put a G with that guy. So that's a gas as well. Everything else is either um, solid or liquid at room temperature. The one that's liquid is bromine. Bromine, which is kind of like right here, you can you could put an L if you wanted to for liquid. Everything else is solid. Everything else is solid. Well. That's not true. What metal is liquid at room temperature? Mercury. Mercury is in um, 2B, and it is the third one down. So we can put an L there, and that's mercury. So that would be... So we could put mercury there. That's the only liquid as far as metal goes. Everything else is solid. That guy's solid. That Everything is solid unless that one's liquid. Gas, 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 liquid, gas. Now, over here, we can call this these different rows and just number them. Wow. 1, 2, 3, 4, 7. 5, 6, 7. It goes 1 to 7. And for the F block, uh, they have pretty fancy names. This guy is called L-A, 
N T H A N I D E, the Lanthanide series. And that's this column of the F block, or that row of the F block, or that period of the F block. And then this one is the actinide series. And that's where you get your stuff like uranium and plutonium and, and such. So, basically, what we're going to do is we have all of this information now. And we want to transfer this information to our regular periodic table. Or if you want to start writing stuff in, one, make that a two, and that's going to be helium. Just be really careful because it's really hard to write that stuff in there. And it's got to be really tiny because this is tiny. Um, that's why I had you create the two-sided one in your uh, period in your notebook because then once you come up with the biggest thing is always if you're going to do this the order that you should do is one start with the blocks figure out your S your P your D and your F and then the second thing we did after that Figure out a way to um, highlight your metalloids because your metalloids are the ones that are going to separate your metals from your non-metals. And then three, label the gases. And then you're going to put in your group and your row labels. And that's like your 1A to 8A, your 3B to 8B, and then 1B to 2B, and then your L and your A series in your F block. So. That's how you want to approach it. And the idea from doing this is to do a dry run. It's like a rough draft of a paper. And what we've done is we've created that rough draft of the paper. And now we can go back and you can actually go back into the big periodic table and start labeling the S, the S block. And you can label the P block. And you can label what are gases and what are not gases, what are metalloids and what are not metalloids, and all of that information. Because then you can use that on every single test, and you don't have to worry about the other stuff that we have. Uh, and like I said, we are going to be studying all sorts of different um, trends when it comes to this. But uh, this is what you want to have started with. And this is where we want to start with everything that we're doing. So the rest of the time, I'm going to pop up the announcements soon enough. Um, but the rest of the time is going to be yours to start color coding the, uh, the big periodic table based off of the smaller periodic table. Or if you want to number the other periodic table, do whatever whatever's going to be best and whatever's going to work for you. And remember, on Tuesday, we will be going over, uh, I will be checking your notebooks. And you'll be getting your first notebook grade. All right, the rest of the time is yours to use this rough draft to do it, to, uh, to work with the other.